from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of AWS Public Sector Online. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman. This is the Cube's coverage of Amazon Web Service Public Sectors online summit. Uh, always love we have phenomenal practitioner discussions. Uh, of course, public sector includes both uh, government agencies, universities, education, uh, broad swath, uh, you know, in, inside that ecosystem. And uh, some, some really, uh, you know, important and timely discussions we're having, of course, with the global pandemic, COVID-19 happening. I'm really happy to welcome to the program Wei Li, who is a PhD and principal investigator, as well as an assistant professor, both Children's National Research Institute, it's associated with George Washington University. Uh, Wei, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for, for, for the opportunity over here. All right, why don't we start with, uh, uh, give us a little bit of, uh, you know, your research focus uh, in general, and uh, what, you know, what projects it is that you're, you're working on these days. Yeah, sure, so yeah, so hello everyone. So our laboratory is, uh, mainly interested in using computational biology and gene editing approaches to understand human genome and human disease. And we are particularly interested in one gene te editing technology, what we call CRISPR screening. So this is a fascinating high throughput technology because it tells you whether one of the 20,000 human genes are connected with some certain disease phenotype in one single experiment. So in the past we developed some of the widely used algorithms to analyze the screening data. It has been downloaded by over 60,000 times, so it's really popular. And right now, there are a couple of uh, ongoing projects, uh, but basically we are trying to, for example, perform machine learning and data mining approaches to find new clues of human disease from the genomics and screening big data. And we also collaborated with a lot of labs around the world and to use this technology to use this technology to find new cures and drugs for cancer and other diseases. So this is the basic um, overview of our uh, current research programs. In terms of the COVID-19 research, I think um, one of the um, major projects we are having is that um, we noticed that CRISPR screening and other similar screening methods has been widely used in many years and in many research labs to, to study virus infection. So in the past 10 years, we've, we have seen people use, are using the CRISPR screening and RAI screening, for example, to study HIV, Zika virus, West, virus, West Nile virus, Ebola, influenza, and also coronavirus. So that raises an interesting question from us if we collect all the screening data together for these viruses, what new information can we find that we cannot identify from a single study? For example, can we identify new patterns or new human genes that are, that are commonly responsible for many different viruses types? Or we can find some genes that are work only for some certain type of viruses. So, Moreover, we know that there are a lot of drugs to target different genes, and we are particularly interested in, for example, can we repurpose some of these drugs to treat different types of viruses, including COVID-19. So that's the, one of the major uh, purpose of the um, ongoing research project in our lab related to COVID-19. So in the end, we hope that we can find some new um, um, new gene functions that have the, um, that, that are broadly essential for different types of viruses, and also new drug targets that can potentially treat existing and new drug, uh, existing and new viruses, including COVID-19. Yeah, CRISPR has shown a lot of promise. Uh, it's definitely a lot of excitement in the research community to be able to uh, work on this. Uh, you talked mm -hmm. a little bit about, uh, you know, big data. Obviously, uh, you know, a lot of computational, uh, you know, power required to to do some of the things you're talking about. Can you speak mm -hmm. a little bit to the the partnership between uh, computer science and uh, the the medicine? How, how do you make sure? Uh, that you know that there's that that marrying of you know the people and the technology uh, to, to focus in the medical space. Yeah, so I think um, yeah my re uh, my back my research background is actually from computer science. I got an uh, undergrad and, and and graduates from the computer science, so I know a lot about the computer science and algorithm. But uh, right now it's uh, quite interesting because our research fo focus half on computer science and half on the medicine. So it's a uh, pretty 
hard experience, but it's really um, uh, super, I would say, um, super exciting to connect both computer science and medicine together. So I think most of the time um, we are focusing on the coding and the algorithm analysis. And, but at, this, at the same time, we also spend a lot of time on, and, uh, like, on interpreting the results. In that sense, we need a lot of um, knowledge from biology and from medicine to make sense, to make our results sense and inter interpretable. And in the end, we hope that our results uh, can be um, develop into some, for example, clinically actionable uh, solutions, including new drugs. Yeah, it, it's if you think about, you know, the research space, you know, often, you know, it's projects that you're taking, you know, months or years uh, to mm -hmm. investigate things. Uh, if we're talking about the current COVID-19 pandemic, of course, there's a critical need today for, for fast moving uh, mm -hmm. activities. So, you mm -hmm. know, what, what are the outcomes from the COVID-19 aspects of of what you're working on, what are some of the the outcomes that we might be able to expect uh, to help uh, patient survivability and uh, uh, other things regarding uh, you know this specific disease? Yeah, so I think um, there are two major, uh, um, I would say there are two major um, benefits from the outcome of our research project. So the first um, the first thing is that we hope to find some genes. That have um that can be potentially drug targets. So if there are existing uh, drugs that can target the genes, then that would be perfect because we don't need to do anything about this. We just uh, need to try the existing existing drugs to uh, target these genes. And in the end, we hope that these drugs can have the broad antiviral um, um I would say the broad antiviral activity. That means that um, um even if like um. For example, if these drugs can be potentially used to treat COVID nineteen, and sometimes in the like several years later in the future, if there's a new virus coming out, uh, hopefully the this we we are doing like there are, it's already the drugs that can target this new gene. Hopefully that uh, the uh, virus will, the new new virus will never happen in sometime in the future. But we hope that when the new virus is coming, we already have the new drugs. To target this, uh, we, we already have existing drugs to target these uh, viruses. So that's one part. And the other part is that we uh, we have like spent a lot of time to, for example, collecting the uh, genomics and screening data. And we are hoping that our research results can be freely accessible around the world by many different uh, researchers in different labs. So that's why we are uh, relying on AWS to build up the um, uh, to to process and to analyze the data, as well as to, uh, uh, to build up an integrated database and websites such that the outcome of our projects can be freely accessible around the world by many other researchers. Yeah, great. I'm, I'm glad you, you connected the dots for us for, for AWS. Can you speak a little bit to, you know, obviously cloud has, you know, the, the ability for us to use, you know, nearly mm -hmm. infinite computational uh, capabilities. Uh, mm -hmm. But what's what specific about AWS helps you along that project? Uh, let, let's start there. Yeah, sure. I think uh, AWS really helps us a lot because uh, we developed an, an algorithm to process the uh, screening data. It actually takes uh, like uh, two or three days to process one data. But if you we are talking about like tens or even hundreds or even thousands of the screening data, um, uh, the existing the uh, high high performance clustering doesn't really help because it takes maybe years to finish. And AWS provides a, a, like flexible um, computing resources, especially the EC2 instance that we can quickly deploy and process in relatively short amount of time. So our estimation is that we can um, reduce the amount of time needed to process to process the public CRISPR screening data from months to just a few days. So that's one part. And the other part is that we are trying to build up the uh, website and database, as I mentioned before, which, which um, we can host a large amount of data. And I think in that sense, AWS and the, um, the computing instance, as well as the AWS RDS service really helps us a lot because we don't need to worry too much about the, uh, a lot of the details of the, of the in deployment of the database and the website. We just uh, go ahead and use the AWS service. It's really straightforward and it saves us a lot of time and effort. Yeah, and you, you talk about the, the, the sharing of data information is so important, but of course, uh, it, we're talking about medical data, highly regulated. So, you know, mm -hmm. what's the importance of the cloud to make sure that you can share with all the other researchers 
uh, yet still make sure that there is the security and compliance uh, that, that, that is required. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, that's a really good question. So right now we don't uh, uh, really need to deal with the uh, patient information because all the data we get is from the public domain and it's it's performed on the human cell lines, not on human patients. So we don't have the concerns uh, about the uh, privacy protections at this moment. But I think in the future, if we want to integrate um, genomics data with the screening data, which is already in my research plan, I think um, the highly secure AWS system actually really provide a really nice platform for us to do this job. Can, can you give us a little bit look forward as to where do you see this research going? Uh, what applicability is there uh, for, for what you're doing now, uh, both you know, as this current pandemic uh, plays out as well as applicability uh, beyond COVID-19? Yeah, sure. I think um, I think one of the major uh, focus of our current COVID nineteen project is that we hope to find some um, drug targets uh, that have their uh, broad antiviral activity. So in, I think in the future, if there's a new virus coming out which is similar to COVID nineteen nineteen, uh, we hope that we are uh, well prepared for that. I think uh, in the future, um, data sharing as well as cloud 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 computing will be becoming more and more important as you can see that uh, most of us are working from home right now. So it's really critical to for us to have the platform to uh, accelerate, accelerate the sharing between different research labs and diff, uh, be around the world. And I think um, many different, uh, uh, the a I think AWS provides the, uh, this um, really nice platform for us to do this job. All right. Well, Whaley, thank you so much uh, for, for sharing with our audience uh, your, your updates. Uh, and really important work. We wish your team the best of luck and, and hope that you also stay safe. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, stay with us for more coverage from AWS Public Sector Summit Online. I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks as always for watching theCUBE.